the secret to effective prayer and fasting from the god servant apostle Arame osai all right this is motoka tv as you're listening to this script may god almighty bless and keep you amen you are running the church is not growing don't worry take a fast and begin to pray this fast can take you for 27 days how far and how long you fast depends on how regularly you fast if you are not used to fasting it will take you one year no you see i'm giving you actual figures so that you will not be disappointed oh i've been there before that's why i have figures i have statistics you think hearing the voice of god is cheap the first time you try it will take you one year but if you know you don't have any other confidence other than God, you will do the one year. If by any means, any, any means you get tired and you back out, it means you, were, you are a failure. Because you are going to meet failure stark naked because you don't have any covering. We started praying in my city. We started vibrating in my city. When we came into the corridor where our ministry was located, they showed us a church. They said the last place where revival fire burned is that church. And the church now has two members and one pastor. Guess what? It's not the members that left, it's the pastor that left. They say nothing of Jesus survives on this street. I said, All right, we'll give it a try. And we began to vibrate. We declared 70 days of prayer and fasting first. Began to vibrate. On the 25th day, they said they are taking me to court. That the neighbors have gathered. That I've come to destroy the delicate balance of the street. So I went and reported to a lawyer and said, it's time to go to court. Told him the situation. I said, anytime they call us, we we'll appear in court. And they were making plans to take me to court. And one of the people, one of the guys, the um, landlords that was close to the place where we pray, that was part of the meeting, that decided to take me to court, his daughter became crippled. Are you there? Ah. They woke up in the morning, she couldn't stand up in it. When they went to consult the oracle, the oracle, the oracle told them, take her to that pastor. <laughs> ah. So the, the, the neighbor that hates me the most went and called his daughter from the campus, the university, and said, because she was the one that sneaked in the night to come and tell me, they are taking you to court. And my father is involved. I said, okay, thank you. They, they called her and said, can you take this, your friend, to that their meeting? I was teaching. And as I was teaching, I had a bottle of water, this type, that they have given us. Huh? I had this kind of stuff. It was on, you know, we, when we teach, we have one platform here, one small platform that we put. So I had, I had a platform there. Then they brought this cripple girl. The Holy Spirit said, go and take your bottle of water, pour it on her. I'll make her walk. I said, are you sure of this? He said, That's the gift of working of miracles. I, I, for your information, I have that gift. So I took the water. I poured on her. And she screamed. I, it's water. I don't know what... Uh, okay. Screamed and started walking. That was how the court case ended. There was no need to go to court again. We continue that prayer. 
when we continued the prayer for 45 days, the monks close to us, they were no longer, the divination was not working. Aye. They sent one of their people to come trace where this blockage is coming from. So he used his tools and he traced it to our building. That day I was not at home. So they called me and they said, there is one malam here doing incantation. I said, ah, wait for him to finish. When he finishes, give him a bottle of water. He will be tired. <laughs> he will need refreshment. So give him a bottle of water. So they waited for him to finish and they, they gave him what they said. How are you doing now? I came back from my job. We continued. We were on like 60 days in the fast. Then the warlock that was down the street, he couldn't stay at home. He walked, he crossed the road, he crossed the road, he crossed the road. Then he came and stood close to the door of the church. So me too, I came and stood close. He, he was doing something. I was speaking in tongue. I was speaking in tongue. I was speaking in tongue. I spoke in tongue. I spoke loud. I spoke. <laughs> you know, naturally I'm stubborn. The Lord did not take all of it away. He allowed, he left. Siakabon. <laughs> when he knew that he couldn't intimidate these people. Do you know that his trip back home was his last trip? Yes, that was his last trip. We continued that prayer. The place began to open. They said no church grows here. Nothing survives here. Nothing survives here. Ah, he was offended. He was offended. He was offended. Then from the university that I graduated, one of our lecturers there that lectured me, he said I was using demonic powers to do miracles. That the power was my wedding ring. I stopped wearing my wedding ring. I stopped for years. But the news spread. So people stopped attending church. We were powerful, but we were not growing. You know what? God used that time to give us roots. Don't think that Satan can stop something that begins with from God. Jesus told Apostle Paul, he said, So, why persecutest thou me? For it is hard to kick against the bricks. That was a parable. He was telling him what we started in eternity. You cannot end in time. You will only wound yourself. Mm. We continue. We continue the prayer. We continue the prayer. People that used to mock me, they came to check. We, were, we didn't even know they were there. We were consumed in the Holy Ghost. Then they went back and said, is they are just praying they are just praying that is only prayer they know how, how to do and you know what when witches are involved even if they tell the story in bay what's that place cardiff bay, cardiff bay. when this the somebody will bring the news to your house you will hear it <laughs> even if it is on the train that they whispered it the devil will make sure that somehow you will hear what they said. He's trying to find your spirit. And many of you have yielded to distractions and you are living in the orchestration of distractions right now. A man that knows that the resource that propels him is in the heart of his spirit can decide to ignore anything and everything. We continued praying. We continued praying. The neighbors still don't like me, but they couldn't. People get healed. Their relatives get healed. When I'm passing, I'm not a good sight. But uh, good things happen when I preach. Good things happen when I pray. I remember a lady that they, they just brought. They just brought her. And I was looking at her. I told her, Mom, she's dead. She didn't believe me because she was still standing. I said, this one is dead. 
She didn't believe me because she was sister. I said, okay, let me show you that she has died. I touched her. Laid my hands on her. She fell down. And you know, this black thing, the black stuff on your eyes, it went up. It was only white. I told her, this is how death looks like. That death is on your daughter. Meanwhile, she was bringing the daughter to tell me that she's about to get married. I know she, she's not about to get married. She's about to die. The moment we removed death, her eyes came back to normal. I said, now she can marry now. So she has three children now. She can marry. She can marry now. They brought someone. I was in Lagos. Brought someone, one, one lady, and death came upon her at home. I was not around. My wife called me and said, there's a problem. What's the problem? There's a lady here. There's a situation. I said, okay. How many people are with you? Call their names. Send this one away. Send this one away. Send this one away. You and this one. Do like this. Do like this. The lady came back to life. And she's still alive. It was, it was, it was telephone, telephone mentorship. Telephone guidance. Some people have negative energy. I don't want to go into that now. Oh, you need to cast them. Jesus cast them out first. I know why. You don't know why. I me, I know why. I know why. I've been taught of the Holy Ghost. I've been taught of the Holy Spirit. That the dead can rise again. If we are going to change Wales, we must learn how to raise the dead again. We will need the supernatural that is so, so, so tangible that the wise of this world will bend their knee to Jesus. A lady ran to my house and she was crying. I said, what is it? It's one of our members. And when she came and cried, when she was a bit relieved, she would look at me and say, oh, you're a young man, you're a young man. I said, oh, what, what's the meaning of that? Friend took her somewhere. They said they are going for a prayer meeting. When she arrived there, it was a shrine. An altar of darkness. And she knew that if she, she runs away, they will kill her. So she pretended as if she was in the... When she went close to the altar, she saw my picture nailed to the altar. That means somebody has come to report me to the chief priest of that shrine. And they nailed. <coughs> and she came to tell me that the arrow that comes from that altar does not miss its target. So she was weeping for me because she was already considering me a dead man. And she was crying and saying, I was young. Ah, this information is okay. So I didn't, I didn't rebuke her again for how did you arrive at a shrine? I did not go into that again because she brought, he brought, she brought the information. <laughs> Went to the Holy Ghost. How do we solve this? It's not me that died. It's the priest that died. And do you realize the woman that brought the information ran mad? I've lived in this part for long to tell you that it's time for us to wake up. In my office, every month, one person dies. And you see the obituary. It didn't concern me until my friend now died. And they die on Thursday. We now to be dying around us. Then the great one now said, wake up in the morning. Be the first to go to work. Do a prayer. Anoint the whole office. So we began to do that. Began to do that. Began to do that. The death stopped. When the death stopped for a long time, 
they now considered me the enemy of the office. There's an assassin that kills people. Not with guns. Uh, I know you don't believe. You know, para do you know it? This assassin carries it in the back. I know you don't believe that. The moment he shakes you, what he has transferred to you is paralysis. Like my friend, you will become paralyzed before you die. So they brought this assassin to take me out. I don't know what I did. And he, he came and seven days later, he came again and <laughs> 21 days later, he became paralyzed. They now said in my office that I'm the most terrible wizard in that. Oh. If somebody has tied you down this night, he will go down. Yeah. The gospel of the last days will be preached by the scepter of the supernatural. The Bible says it's going to be in the same way that Janice and Jambres withstood Moses. Gospel will be brought to the, the theater of the supernatural. And that's why every believer in Jesus Christ at this time must be equipped to know the Holy Ghost. Oh yeah, that's okay. We went to a village to preach the gospel. On the poster, we said the crusade will start by 5 p.m. We got there by four. There was nobody around. When I asked them, what is happening? They said they have gone to the farm. They will come back by 7 p.m. Then they will come to the crusade by eight. So we were already there by four. And the people who wanted to preach to will come by eight. That's four hours. So I told my tour guide, take me to the shrine of the priest. I, I want to pay a court sick visit to the shrine. All the stories I'm telling you are true. So we went to the shrine. Meanwhile, let me give you an additional information. I was led. I was led to go there. Don't, if you go without leading, don't, don't say that it was Cardiff conference you came. I was led. I was led by the Holy Ghost. So we went to visit the, the custodian of the shrine was a hundred years old. He's the one that keeps the 22 altars of his people. He puts blood on it. As we were coming, he just finished putting blood on the altars and the spirits were happy because he was singing a song that was not in the music books. A strange song. When I came and he saw me, he cried out. He said, who are you? I said, we come in peace. He got angry. And he began to do incantation. I was gentle. I was quiet. Because I was waiting for the Holy Ghost. He raised his hand and I asked him to lower that hand or I will cost the hand. So he looked for it, brought it. <laughs> brought it down. It was after that he, he said I was welcome. Gave me a seat, I sat down and we began to speak. And I began to read the scripture. 
concerning what Simeon said when he came to the temple without inf invitation to the dedication of Jesus. When I was still reading the Bible, seven old men joined us in that place. Very old men. They sat down. Simeon said, this child is for the rise and the fall of many. And it shall be a sign that many shall speak against. Oh, then I used that scripture and began to speak to them about the need to receive Jesus. Because he will be the reason for the rise and for the fall of many. They were caught to the heart and they gave their lives to Jesus Christ. I asked the chief priest to renounce the spirits that he has been serving. And he mentioned their name, he would renounce and we curse the spirit. Mention this name, he would renounce it and we curse that spirit. We did it 22 times. Then I left them. We climbed down from the mountaintop, but it, meanwhile, it, that engagement took four hours. By the time we climbed down to the crusade ground, people were there on the crusade. Now, this is what happened. We're singing praise and worship. Clapping to God. Without a preacher. Without a miracle worker. Crippled people rose up and began to walk. There was no preacher on the pulpit. There was no miracle worker on the pulpit. The moment we disarmed the mast of witchcraft. The people that were tied by witchcraft rose up from wheelchairs and walked without prayer. Three crippled people walked that evening without prayer. My job became easy. When I came to preach, I just said, can you see what Jesus is doing? Can you see? Can you see this? Can you see it? Can you? Eh, I led the village, that village to Jesus. It was by the supernatural. A great victory was won for the gospel. Can we pray tonight? For the Lord wants to train your spirit. To teach you how to hack it. To teach you the science of yielding to him. He wants to take you to the place in his lair where light dwells. And in that corridor, no deception can stand. For light is that which makes manifest. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, woo. These are the days of the end. And you want to conscript your forces, your people your messengers to equip them to know the ways of your spirit that's why we came tonight can someone cry to him cried all right thank you and i hope that uh, this clip really blesses and transform your life if you do don't forget to hit that subscription button and turn on the notification so that you will not miss any of our daily upload once again don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, may God Almighty bless and keep you. Amen.